I have a high pressure water hose usually used to remove paint which is what I am doing with it today however I'm going to also pull out a few uh, fossil rocks and clean them with it I have a Mississippi and crinoids but they've got uh, green algae on them I'm gonna blast half of it I'm gonna show you the before and after I've got uh, rocks here with uh, water channels I'm gonna do the before and after I'm only gonna clean half of it in other words and then I'm even gonna try uh, out of curiosity, I've talked about this on some of the other videos. This is a bryozoan head here. In between the arms of the bryozoa, there is sediment. And that is ice wedging out. That is weathering out by being frozen multiple. You can scratch. This kind of sediment is soft enough to scratch with your fingernail, as I just did. And you could remove it. I'm going to try to remove it with the pressure. I'm just going to see what, how much of a... Uh, how much of a dent I can put into it, how much I can remove with the high pressure uh, water gun, just out of curiosity. Am I, I going to give it a try on this coral head as well? Again, I'll do half that I'll do and half I'll leave uh, alone. I'm going to film, uh, I'm going to put my uh, letter, the G for Greg. Come up close to film that. So it's, it's obviously made a difference. I should mention that I've done the same thing with my uh, my crinoid stems. This is just plain old crinoid stems. But look at the uh, this is the clean layer. This is the dirty layer. Same thing. I've done it with uh, some bryozoans. You couldn't really tell much here. That was a pretty clean rock, so that didn't make a big difference. Um, but anyway, now you do have to be careful and use some common sense. Obviously, little fossils with little pieces, they're just going to be torn and ripped up. So little trilobites it'll blast off minute little fossils. It blasted off uh, this one. That's no surprise. I expected that. But it was just an experiment. I wanted to see it for myself. But look at the difference. You know, you can hold it back and make it a little bit less uh, powerful to avoid that. But it's just, uh, here it is clean, here's clean, here's dirty. Okay, this has worked uh, incredibly well. Some of these fossils are rather dirty. What's going on here is that this is a, a crinoid slab brought back from uh, Lake Nam. So this has a lot of stains from lake, the lake itself. So you have concrete on the side of your house. Uh, I just washed, pressure washed that and got all the algae off. So the rocks, this crinoid slab here, um, it's green with algae in between. All these rocks, after several years being outside, have a slime layer of algae all over them. This is washing that off. This is washing off the accumulated dirty stuff from the crinoid slab. Uh, Lake Credible it has Mississippi and crinoid stems. It's biogenic rock. That means almost the entire rock is nothing but body parts of fossilized animals. And down in certain locations, it is just an incredibly crinoid rich layer. Anyway, so because this came out so well, I'm going to show you this in the process of being cleaned. Ready?
Here's the uh, water channel slab, and you can see uh, half clean, half dirty. And the uh, the um, coral head doesn't seem to be uh, hurt in the least bit. It seems a tiny bit cleaner. Now it's 100% clean. Big difference. Let's check out the beautiful crinoid stems. I have to. I haven't made a video explaining cry, Mississippi crinoids yet, but I'll get around to it. Just beautiful. These are nature's uh, first poker chips. Mother Nature invented the poker chip. Or should I say crinoid osicle to uh, keep those crinoid stems nice and uh, strong. The, uh, the disc part is shaped like a poker chip. Those ridges help to keep it good and straight. This is the dry version. Potter's cleaning his playhouse for the pressure worker. Some jobs are just too fun, even for kids. 